This year, the Nepali government and tourism board launched the Visit Nepal 2020 campaign to help promote the nation's rich culture and heritage to the world. One person who's been doing that in his own way here in Korea already is Sujan Shakya. Audiences in Korea will be familiar with his appearances on various television shows, often talking about his love for his home country. And for his role as a bridge between Korea and Nepal, he was designated as an honorary citizen of Seoul like, uh, late last year by the mayor, Park Won Sun. To share his stories about his home country and his life in Seoul, we have Su- Su- Suzanne Shakya joining us in the studio for this week's Touch Base in Seoul. Welcome to the show. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. You know, like just uh, It's been a long time. I've not been here in KBS for the radio shows, so it's been a long time. Well, it's an absolute <laughs> honor to have you here on the show with us today. Thank and you very much. And before we talk about Nepal, let's talk a bit about yourself. Yep. Of course, many people here in Korea will recognize you from various television shows that you've taken part in. But for our listeners who would be wondering who you are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in Korea? Okay. So, you know, like get, going back, uh, how, I, how I came here, it's like 2010, I guess. My father, he was pretty stubborn, you know, like he wanted me to get out of the country. Mm. So I don't know, like uh, this is destiny, I guess, you know, like I came to Korea just for six months and I was telling, you know, like I'll be here for six months and I'll go back. But the six months became 10 years now and I'm still living here, you know, <laughs> so I don't know like how time went by. So actually, uh, I come from a middle class family in Nepal. I was uh, born and raised in Kathmandu, which is the capital. Uh, I did my university graduation in Nepal as well. And then I came to Korea. I did seven months of uh, Korean language and then went to Janggu University for urban planning. I graduated there. And then after that, you know, like I went to a company uh, where I'm working right now as well. It's been almost four years now. I'm working. So it's a company where they manufacture parachutes. So we supply to, you know, like different countries in the world. So I'm doing marketing. Uh, That's what I'm doing out of that. If I have time, you know, like I do like interviews, TV shows and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That's all about me, I guess. Right. Okay. So you've been living here 10 years. 10 years. Yes. 10 years. When you first came to Korea, what did you know about Korea? All I knew was, you know, like 2002 World Cup. And, you know, like war between north and south, <laughs> that's all I had in my mind, nothing else. Right. And you weren't planning to stay here. You said seven no. months was yes. your goal. But then yes. what made you stay? I think, you know, uh, the turning point was Korean language. I was in love with Korean language. You know, like, I don't know, like, there was this, I don't know, the charm, I, I have to say, you know, like the meanings and everything. After I started learning it. Yeah, I was like, I thought, you know, like, oh, this is a chance, you know, like I should be studying more. Mm. That's what uh, kept me, you know, like going for a, a little while. Mm. You know, like seven months was my goal, but it went to, you know, like more than one year. And audiences in Korea will know how good you are at Korean now. No, I'm still learning. <laughs> you started making television appearances, I yes. understand, in 2015, something like that? Yes, 2014, late 2014, I guess. Mm. And then like uh, 2015 was the start, I guess, yes. And you quickly became somewhat of an ambassador for your home country. Yeah, that was, you know, like pretty quick, you know. I, I still, you know, like sit down and stare and gaze, you know, like what happened in 2014 and 15, mm. you know, like I still have, you know, like, is it a dream or, you know, like what's happening? So I'm still in dreams, I guess, you know. But what was that like <laughs> suddenly coming under the spotlight, talking about Nepal and promoting it to Korean yes. audiences who might not be familiar with yeah, the so, nation? So it's, it's you know, like it's, it's a huge responsibility. So, you know, like I felt pretty, you know, like harsh as well, you know, like, am I doing the right thing or not? You know, like if I tell something about Nepal, as an individual, I'm telling about Nepal, but, you know, mm. like, it's it's become, like, a huge thing, you know, like, if Sujan says something about Nepal, it's about Nepal. So mm. I was being very careful about, you know, like, each and everything that I'm telling. Mm. So the facts has to be facts, you know, like, uh, something which is not in there has to be fake. So these kind of stuff, you know, like, I had to be very, very conscious and, you know, like, very careful about when talking about Nepal or talking about Korean in Nepal. So these were the difficult part, I guess, you know, the stardom and these kind of stuff where, you know, like it was pretty bizarre for me as well, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like you're in the subway and someone is asking for you to, you know, like take a picture together. So these were like pretty, I don't know, right? like what we see in movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then you also started, I understand, giving speeches and talking to schools and various yes. organizations as well, right? Is that what you mostly talk about? Uh, mostly, you know, like the experiences that I have here in Korea. Like I started from zero level and, you know, like I came to this point. So there are so many experiences that I have, you know, like there's so many problems that I faced. So these are the talk 
topics, you know, like I usually give to uh, students. So they might be inspired, you know, like the experience that I had might be a learning point for them as well. So that's how uh, these kind of programs started. And I'm still helping, you know, like uh, kids to, you know, like dream more and be like inspire these kind of stuff. What kind of difficulties are you talking about there? You said you, you might teach your, uh, some students about some of the difficulties that they might, might, you might have faced. Yeah. What kind of uh, things are you talking about? For example, you know, like we talk about a global, you know, like we have this global thing going around everywhere, you know, like we talk about multiculturalism, you know, like so not only limited to only one country, you know, like if I was in Nepal, I was I should have been limited in only Nepal, but now, you know, like I, I came to Korea, you know, like I'm doing business with, you know, like so many different multinational companies. So these kind of stuff, you know, like how we start, you know, like how opportunities comes and how experiences teaches you, these kind of stuff, you know, like if you keep on telling and, you know, like giving this to the people or the children, mm. I think they might get some, you know, like a learning point, I guess. For all the things that you've done promoting Nepal, you were uh, recognised and, and given an honorary Seoul citizenship yeah. by Seoul Mayor Park Won Soon last year. How did it feel to be recognised? Like that, that was that was a huge thing, you know, like because uh, being recognised as a Seoul citizen, you know, as an honorary citizen, that was pretty big for me actually. I was thinking, you know, like should I get it or not, you know? But <laughs> after that, when I got it, I found out that I was the youngest Nepali who ever got this one wow okay. so that was also a biggest ach achievement as well so i even felt uh, more you know like uh that i've been living here in seoul for like more than five years so it, it becomes uh you know like as a right of mine mm. as a duty to promote seoul to you know like nepalese and other people in all around the world so yeah i've known seoul for five years and there's so much to talk about so yeah i think it was a pretty good decision they made i guess <laughs> So as I mentioned in the introduction, this year was designated Visit Nepal 2020 by the Nepalese government yes. and Nepal's tourism board. I have unfortunately never been to Nepal, but oh, it's on my that's... bucket list of places to travel. You should be, you know, like if uh, if you need any help going to Nepal, just let me know anytime. You, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah, personal tour guide. yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> for sure. You know, like uh, I, I I usually go to Nepal as well. You know, like mm. for example, in a year, like I try to go there twice. Mm. So going for me is like visiting Nepal as well. You know, exploring other country, exploring other areas as well, which where I have not been. So you know, like if you tell me, you know, like if you want to so go, then yeah, just let me know. Plan my trip so sure, when you're sure, whenever sure. you're going to Nepal. Sure. That's a very kind invitation. <laughs> but say I can't go with you yep. what can you tell me to prepare me to go to nepal where do i start and mm -hmm. what kind of places should i go oh uh, you know like uh, if you go to nepal you have to start from Kathmandu because the only international airport is in Kathmandu. after that you know like uh, Kathmandu is is a city you know like it's a capital so there's so much to do but still you know like some people feel pretty uneasy like going you know like bustling cities and you know mm. like city sound the smells and everything mm. some some of them like are pretty you know like not used to it but i recommend you to go to pokhara uh it's a beautiful place uh a city full of lakes you know like uh, or mecca to go into the mountains you know like if you just take two three books and just stay there you know like this the time flies so these kind of places i want you to i want to recommend you as well and uh this time i think you know like if i if i miss mountains then you know like mm. uh, nepal is full of mountains sure even sure. mount everest is there so mm. there's this place called langtang which has been discovered recently even uh, president moon jae i think he visited there uh, a couple of years ago so that route has been pretty popular these days to koreans as well so i recommend you to you know like or someone visiting korea or someone visiting nepal to go to langtang as well and there's no you know like uh, there's no, no difficulties in going to nepal actually you know mm. the p people are pretty friendly right now 2020 the government is promoting tourism so you know like everywhere you go you'll feel friendly you know like you'll be welcomed uh, people will be happy you know like if you're going going to nepal so i don't think there's going to be lots of difficulties visiting nepal do you miss nepal i mean you've been living here 10 years now you said yeah, it's, you know, like, it's, it's, it's hard to make decisions, you know, like when you're in Nepal, you're missing Korea and when you're in Korea, you're missing <laughs> Nepal at the same time. So, you know, like, but still my family is in Nepal. So yeah, I, I miss Nepal a lot. But do you have plans to go back or are you going to stay in Seoul, do you think? Mm, I think, you know, like I have to be wise in this, you know, like I don't want to leave Korea as well and I don't want to stay in Nepal as well. So it's, you know, like I have to do something which makes me, you know, like come to Korea as well, go to Nepal as well. 
So let's see what happens. Right. And can you tell us any about future plans that you might have? Mm, uh, this is a pretty tricky question. You know, like I say, you know, like these days I've stopped planning after, you know, like so much of thing happened last year because like I, I was going through a very hard time after my father passed away. I'm so, you know, that. like yeah, these days I've stopped, you know, like planning, you know, like whatever you plan, if it does not work out, you're always in despair, you know, like you're... Uh, not feeling good you know so this is my motto is to you know like just live the fullest that's it <laughs> well that's i think a great message to end on it's been absolutely wonderful to have you on the show today and even before i spoke to you i wanted to go to nepal sure but, let uh, me know man just just now anytime. i've got a personal tour guide who's gonna <laughs> yeah. take me i have to go now yeah. Yeah, so I can't wait to visit one day anyway. We've been speaking to Sujan Ashakia from Nepal and an honorary Seoul citizen. Thank you for coming today and sharing your story with us. Thank you very much for inviting. Thank you.